When Chair now will recognize it, you or Mr. Uh, uh, the ranking member for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, we've seen some uh, very strange, indeed bizarre bedfellows uh, <laughs> jumping in together in this cause. We got some people who started out by saying they want to dismantle the FBI brick by brick and destroy the agency. Uh, our distinguished colleague, Mr. Jordan, seems to have made a, a career of trying to disassemble the FBI. He wants the FBI headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama, apparently. And then we've got some disappointed applicants from Virginia who are trying to attack the whole administrative process by which they were entered into it in the first place back in 2014, as Ms. Carnahan just explained. So well, why don't we try to get back to the law here? and what the administrative process really is. Because the administrative process came up with a very clear result, that the Greenbelt site that was chosen by the Site Selection Authority has the lowest overall cost to taxpayers, number one. Number two, the Greenbelt site is the most transit accessible site due to its short walking distance to the metro and commuter rail. It offers the greatest opportunity for the government's investment to positively affect the Washington region through sustainable and equitable development and so on. There are five criteria set forth, and the Site Selection Authority chose the Greenbelt site. Now, uh, my friend Mr. Jordan um, uh, and uh, Mr. Conley pounced on the uh, deliberations of the panel. So what we need to look at is, well, what's the relationship between the panel and the Site Selection Authority. Now, if I understand you correctly, uh, Administrator Carnahan, back in 2014, the panel then unanimously advanced three sites, all of which were in Maryland. But the Site Selection Authority overruled the panel in their language. Of course, it's not an overruling because it wasn't a decision in the first place. It's just a recommendation. But the Site Selection Authority said, thank you for your advice. I'm going to add one more candidate from Virginia, which is the Springfield site, and then we're going to advance that to have all three looked at. Then the panel comes back and says, uh, well, we, we happen to like the Springfield site, but the Site Selection Authority, which is charged with your decision-making power over this exclusively, and everybody agrees that's what the process is, says, no, the Greenbelt site is the one that conforms to these five criteria. Now, we've got to have some way of making these decisions. Otherwise, the Congress of the United States is going to be involved in every uh, occasion in which you're making a decision about where to place a federal agency or department. Um, how often does this process take place with a panel and a site selection authority? Is that a rare occasion, or does that happen frequently? So most, most thanks, thanks for that uh, explanation, Congressman. Most uh, site selections are not uh, of this great of interest, frankly, uh, to, to Congress. It's and a headquarters, and people, it's a headquarters, it's a headquarters so right. For, for a headquarters like this, this is a very normal process where there is a panel of some type that makes recommendations and an ultimate decider who is the site selection authority. Yeah, and then sometimes the, the site selection authority agrees with the panel. Uh, sometimes it disagrees with it. It disagreed when Springfield, Virginia was put into the competition. And then the site selection authority disagreed with it again when it decided that Greenbelt was the way to go. Um, well, what about this idea that there's somehow some kind of conflict of interest uh, in the site selection authority because the Site Selection Authority worked for WMATA, which is an agency that serves Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., or that there's some kind of conflict of interest because the Site Selection Authority has a career in government and became the deputy mayor, not of Greenbelt, Maryland, but of the District of Columbia. Do you see a conflict of interest there? Uh, no, sir, and we fully vetted uh, Ms. Albert's relationship with Ramada when she joined GSA and subsequent to the FBI director bringing up concerns, we had legal counsel look through that again um, and found no conflict. These, as you said, are public entities uh, with no interest, financial interest in any way. All right, I'm just, I want to apologize to you that this 
hearing, which should really be about how we can serve the taxpayers of America better, has been derailed for a whole coalition of partisan political and parochial purposes uh, today. But in any event, you're doing a good job, and thank you for sticking with the administrative process and with the rule of law such as it is. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman.